Good afternoon, ladies, gentlemen, and non-binary peoples. This is Bronson's Binding His Necessary Fantasy Football Talk for Thursday, November 17th. <laughs> I don't remember the date today. Um, yeah, the 3 a.m. shift, EPS was fine. Um, wasn't bad at all. Wasn't really tired. Did come home and force myself to sleep. And then I slept till 1 o'clock. So, uh, missed lunch. It's okay. I'm gonna go out here soon after I do this, and uh, you know, get an early jump on dinner. It's three thirty-ish until about six, and then I'm gonna go over to Portland because I did end up deciding to go to the Nets game today. I want to see Kevin Durant. I've never seen Kevin Durant in person. I want to see him, even if it costs me fifty-three dollars to sit in the nosebleeds. I'm going to that game, and then I will do some more Ubering when I get back. Until about midnight, 12.30. Maybe I'll just stay up till 2. And just Uber till 2. Even though I did try one time. One night I did try to stay up till like 4 a.m. To see uh, how it was. It was very slow. It was very, very slow. So it was not, not really worth it to stay out past midnight or 12.30. Anything like that. Um, so... This will be the wide receiver spikes and yikes video for week 11. I got a huge, huge problem with this list. So we'll get to it. Um, let's just start. Let's just, let's just get on. Let's just get on with it. The top 10 list for week 11. Keep in mind, again, you got the Dolphins, Jaguars, Buccaneers, and Seahawks on a bye this week. All right, wide receivers, top 10 list. Your wide receiver ones. Number one, we got Justin Jefferson versus the Cowboys. I mean, are you surprised after the monster week he had last week, after the career that he's had so far? Two, we got Stephon Diggs versus the Browns, which will, that game has actually been moved to Detroit. Three, we got Devontae Adams at Denver. Four, we got CeeDee Lamb at the Vikings. So you got two top four wide receivers in the same game in Minnesota. Five, we got DeAndre Hopkins versus the 49ers. Six, we got Amon Ross St. Brown coming off a monster game. Uh, that target share was was massive, just like I su just suggested it would be without T.J. Hawkinson. Amon Ross St. Brown at six at the Giants. Seven, we got A.J. Brown coming off a terrible game. He'll be seeing the Colts. Um, I, I would anticipate that he's not going to have such a bad game again. Eight, we got T. Higgins against the Steelers. Nine, we got Terry McLaurin against the Texans. Since Taylor Heineke has been reinserted as the quarterback in, in the Washington, not only has the team done better, but the, the running game situation, Antonio Gibson has, uh, you know, it's been a, a pretty even split. It hasn't been just the Brian Robinson show. And then Terry McLaurin has reestablished himself as a really good fantasy wide receiver with Taylor Heineke. I think Terry, Taylor Heineke should keep the job. I don't really think they ever should have went out and got Carson Wentz. Nine, Debo Samuel at the Cardinals. So now your wide receiver two is 11 through 20. At 11, we got Michael Pittman versus the Eagles. 12, we got Juju Smith-Schuster at the Chargers. 13, we got Mike Williams versus the Chiefs. All signs point to Mike Williams being good to go. 14, we got Amari Cooper at the Bills. Again, it's in Detroit. 15, we got Gabriel Davis versus the Browns in Detroit. 16, we got Cortland Sutton versus the Raiders. We got... Um, it looks like Jerry Judy's going to be out. So Cortland Sutton is elevated up the rankings. 17, we got DJ Moore against the Ravens. 18, we got Alan Lazard versus the Titans tonight. The Titans have the worst secondary um, in the NFL and fantasy wise. So Alan Lazard uh, should be uh, the, his wide receiver two status reflects that. 19, we got Brandon Ayuk at the Cardinals. 20, we got Tyler Boyd. At the Steelers, Tyler Boyd always plays really well in front of the, his hometown team, uh, his hometown fans in Pittsburgh. So, him being on the wide receiver two line <laughs> reflects that. The fact that they're coming off a bye, hopefully they find a way to better utilize Tyler Boyd. 21, your wide receiver threes, 21 through 30. Jacoby Myers versus the Jets. 22, you got Chris Olave versus Jim Ramsey and the Rams. 23, we got Rondell Moore versus the 49ers. Speculation is that Rondell Moore is going to see more work, more targets with Zach Ertz 
out. But um, there's also, it's looking like Marquise Brown is going to be back for this game as well. So, so with a pecking order in, in Arizona, we don't know how that's going to play out. But uh, Marquise Brown's coming back at the perfect time to replace Zach Ertz, which means that maybe Trey McBride isn't going to be as productive as I thought he would. But I still think Trey McBride is going to be a guy that Kyler Murray or Colt McCoy, whoever it is, looks for on the goal line. 24, we got Devontae Smith coming off a decent game against the Colts. Um, against the Commanders, he's going to see the Colts this weekend. Uh, and I remember <laughs> I told you not to start him. He wasn't even a flex consideration last week. I was wrong, of course. So He's back in the flex conversation this week. I'm not spiking him more. Yeah, him. He's fine at 24. 25, we got Deontay Johnson versus the Bengals. 26, we got Adam Thielen versus the Cowboys. 27, we got Keenan Allen versus the Chiefs. Still, we still don't know if Keenan Allen is going to play. Keenan Allen hasn't been uh, hasn't been there for us since week one. Garrett Wilson at 28. Garrett Wilson seeing the Patriots. 29, we got Allen Robinson at the Saints. Allen Robinson uh, makes an appearance in the top 30 because Cooper Cup is out. So we, it's going to be interesting to see how the uh, target share works out in the Rams, uh, among the Rams' pass catchers without Cooper Cup. And then 30, we got Darnell Mooney against the Falcons secondary, which is has been really bad without AJ Terrell out there. All right, so let's get to the yikes. I believe I have six. Yes, I have six of them, <laughs> all in the top 25. All right, starting with Michael Pittman at 11. Um, he has not been productive enough over the last month or so to warrant being a high-end wide receiver two. He is more of a high end flex for me because we know the talent's there. Um, and we know that Matt Ryan is going to, he's going to see a high target share with Matt Ryan. But again, um, he's been outproduced by Paris Campbell. And Paris Campbell's outside the top 30. So I would move Pittman down, Paris Campbell up. Not to spoil anything for you, but I do have Paris Campbell, who's at 32. He's in my top 30. Next spike, I mean, next guy, Juju Smith-Schuster. I think if he plays in this game, his ranking in the top 15 is fine, uh, but he is dealing with a concussion. He's in concussion protocol. He's very questionable for this game. Uh, it's Thursday. We still don't know if he's gonna play. So I've got him a little lower in my rankings because of the, of the doubt. And then next we got Amari Cooper at 14 against the Bills. Amari Cooper has not been super consistent this week, this year. Um, with David and Joku potentially back with the rise of Donovan Peoples Jones, it's hard to trust Mark Cooper as more than a flex play. He's outside my top 20. Next, we have Cortland Sutton at 16. Even with Jerry Judy out, um, I don't know if we can rely on Cortland Sutton. He's been very underproductive over the last month. And um, so, I, I mean, I'm not trusting him. He might be a flex play for me because of Jerry Judy being out, but he's not, uh, he's not a top 20 wide receiver for me. And then DJ Moore, 17, immensely talented guy. And I feel bad for him with his situation in Carolina, but Baker Mayfield just, just simply cannot get him the ball. Kind of like with when Odell Beckham was with Baker Mayfield in Cleveland. Um, they got the same situation going on here in Carolina. DJ, until Carolina gets a better quarterback, DJ Moore, cannot be trusted as a top 20 wide receiver in fantasy. Um, P.J. Walker was getting the end of the ball just fine. I don't know why Baker can't do it. Um, and then my last, my final yike is going to be Deontay Johnson again because he, he, he up until last week, he was leading Pittsburgh in targets every week, but Pat Fryer moved past him in uh, leading the team in targets last week. So DJ, Deontay Johnson has fallen to second in the pecking order in target share. Um, it, it, it's just not getting better for Deontay Johnson. It's really sad to see because I was so high on Deontay Johnson coming in this year. I drafted him all over the place. Uh, he was actually in a couple of leagues, my wide receiver won. Um, so it's been rough sledding. <laughs> Thank God I got guys like DeAndre, DeAndre Hopkins. And uh, uh, who else did I get late? Uh, yeah, DeAndre Hopkins. You know, guys like Rondell Moore on the waiver wire. Uh, I got guys on the waiver wire to, to pick up the slack, but 
uh, Deontay Johnson is just not getting better for him. It's not turning around for him, and I don't see um, any light at the end of the tunnel. He's outside my top 30. <sighs> On my spikes, I'm going to try to do these really quick because I... Too much information, but I, I gotta go. I gotta use the facilities. Um, so the spikes. Where did I start at? Where is my first spike? Okay, guys, outside the top twenty-five, Keenan Allen against the Chiefs. It's a great matchup. We know what Keenan Allen can do when he's healthy. Um, so he's obviously going to be higher on the list. Um, if healthy, he's the top twenty guy for me. Garrett Wilson at 28, um, he was really coming on for the Jets the last couple of weeks. I would imagine with the bye week, the coaching staff has, has found a way to um, realize what a weapon Garrett Wilson is. They're going to try to get him the ball a little bit more frequently. And then four guys outside the top 30 who I think should be in the top 30. Paris Campbell, I already mentioned, against the Eagles. AJ um, Michael Pittman is going to see Darius Slay. Paris Campbell has been the far more productive wide receiver for the Colts of the last four or five games, so I trust him more than Michael Pittman right now. He's a top 30 play. George Pickens at 33. Uh, we saw last week the Steelers are, are finding creative ways to get him the ball, so that bodes well for him moving forward. He's a flex play for me. Christian Watson at 37 gets the Titans tonight. Again, the Titans are the worst secondary in fantasy football right now, and Christian Watson is coming off a big three-touchdown performance. So he should be in the top 30 as well. And then Marquise Brown at 40. If he does return to the field, he's going to step right back into his top 20 status as a wide receiver against the 49ers. All right. Beast love and nacho fries. I'll get to the running backs. I don't know if we'll get to them right now, uh, but I'll, I'll try to get to them. I don't know. I, I don't know if we'll get to them before the game, before kickoff today, but I intend to. Uh at least get it filmed and then upload it while I'm driving, which that could take a while. It may not get uploaded till after the game, till after kickoff. So I apologize for that, but at least you'll have the wide receivers. So have a good day. Thanks. I'll see you all shortly. Good luck.